Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here tonight, and I'm back here at my MX-14 install, and except I'm not, if you look real close, you'll see the installer icon up here. I'm actually using a live USB, and I'm going to show you how to set up persi a persistence file so that you can have a complete usable Annex system, not excuse me, Annex, MX-14 system on a USB stick and carry around in your pocket including saving files, installing new pr packages whole nine yards. I'm actually really liking this system going in between netbooks and I've actually got my Chromebook dual booting with 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 MX some hang ups with the Chromebook but that's a tale for another video. So let's get started. So we're going to go down to the whisker menu. This is a clean install except I have installed a screen utility screen recording utility so you can see what I'm doing, but I am running live from the USB right now. We're going to come down to the whisker menu and we're going to type in remaster. And This is going to show you the remaster uh, control center. Normally it would ask you for your root password, but I've already put mine in. So with Remaster CC you get several options and the first one we want to use is the Setup Live Persistence. So we're going to click on this option. Now we're going to get a, a page with some information. Now if you have any of these things made, like from an old Persistence install for instance, you'll get a whole bunch of information here about how much room they're taking up on the stick. But this is brand new, it's clean. You can see here's the space that's taken up the stick, here's how much space I've got available. Here's my RAM that I have available. I'm using an 8 gig SanDisk cruiser. Uh, right now, the uh, it, I'm almost sitting, almost completely empty. It's right around. It's just the ISO plus simple screen recorder is all that I've got on here. So I'm going to create a root persistence file now. MX Antics and by extension MX are very configurable when it comes to live USBs, and I'm going to show you what I think is the best system after some trial and error and I'll, I'll talk you through part of it. Root persistence is what you're going to want if you're going to be installing applications. That's going to make a a live version of the root file system where applications would go. Uh, if all you're going to do is make system changes and store data and go with the default apps that are here, you can go with a home uh, persistence file. There's all sorts of options. Uh, but we're going to create a, a root persistence first. Now I recommend if you use the, it'll work on a 4 gig stick, but you get a lot more, uh, the bigger the USB stick, the more, the larger the persistence files you can put on it. I like to make a gig persistence, root persistence file, because I install a lot of packages. Now you can stick with EXT2, it'll work fine, and actually on USB stick, it's probably what you want to do anyway. Are you ready? yes I'm ready to proceed with the creating the root persistence file now I want to caution you there's very little there's no feedback after you click yes it's gonna look like your machine's not doing anything except if you crank open HTOP you're gonna see that the CPU is gonna be spiking and there's gonna be an app running in the background creating the persistence file on the drive but there's no progress bar or anything so click it and relax it won't take very long uh, I'm going to pause the video here for just a moment simply because um, uh, it, it's going to take one or two minutes for the for the system run and otherwise it would be really boring to sit here and look at an empty screen. So here we are back and you will see that we now have success file root FS is created. This is the, this is the mint screen you want to wait for before you go any further. So you click OK. So now our menu comes back up and it shows us that we've created a root FS file system. One gig, we're using two megs of it, that's mostly just formatting. OK, so what we, now we want to do is we want to make a home persistence file. Now you might say, and I, and I used to just make a root one and be done with it, uh, but I discovered there's some advantages to having a set your home partition in a separate home persistence file, one of which one it's it's slightly faster. Um, the whole and if you do a remaster of your drive, which we'll cover later, you don't have to incorporate the home 
partition and it all your data stays separate on the drive. It's really handy. Plus, and for me this is not insignificant, I have discovered there is one app that will not install if you just use root persistence and keep your home folder in the root persistence file and that app's Netflix desktop. It won't work. Um, the off file system that that the live USB uses won't accept, uh, it won't let the Netflix desktop install finish unless you create a home persistence file. So I'm creating it. And again, I'm going to give it a gig. You probably actually don't need that much, but Netflix desktop actually takes up quite a bit of space even in the home folder because it has a Wine installation and installs uh, the Wine, the Windows version of Firefox. At any rate, I got the room on a stick. I'm going to give it another gig. It's going to take about as long as the other. Now, because uh, I'm actually going to make the home partition ext4 uh, <clears throat> because uh, ext4 by default has some extended file attributes that I'm honestly not sure ext2 has. It's not hurting anything to make it ext4. You get slightly more wear on the USB drive, but it'll be okay as far as I'm concerned. Now I'm going to sit back. Shall we proceed? Yes. And again, this is going to take about the same amount of time as it took for me to make the rootfs file, which, uh, through the magic of YouTube, was very quick for you, but for me, it took about four minutes. I assume this will be about four minutes as well. I'm going to pause, and I'll see you in four minutes. Okay, so we're back. The home file system was created. Click OK. And here's all the pertinent details for there as well. All right, so we're click go, we're gonna click cancel now because we're done with the remaster control center. Really quick, yes, or rather with setting up live persistence. So the next thing we can hit configure live persistence. You actually can't do this yet. You have to reboot and select one of the persistence options before you can use any of these other options. Uh, so we'll do that. I'm gonna click close. I'm going to reboot. Okay, so these are the. Uh, I'm back. I booted the USB key into VirtualBox rather than on my real hardware because I wanted to show you what happens the first time you select one of the persistence options. Now, this pers root persistence loads the new information in the root file system file we created into RAM. So it's pretty speedy if you got the RAM. If you don't have the RAM, I'd go with static root persistence. Uh, it keeps everything on the USB stick. It just extends it. It's just slightly slower for most things. And home persistence only mounts that home file system persistence file that we created with the tool. It gets mounted in any of those three options. So I'm going to click. Uh, since I'm going with the um, virtual box, it doesn't have a whole lot of RAM assigned to it. So I'm actually going to select I'm going to go ahead and select root persistence. I think I've got enough RAM uh, done on this one that you can s we can show you how everything works. Okay, you can see we've now mounted the two files if you caught the text. Now the first time you go through it's going to say, okay, you need a new password uh, for your root file. So you need to get a root password. Now the default is root, um, but since we now have a live persistence system, the antics devs think we need a new password, so we'll make a new password. And again, the same for the demo account, which is a user, actually a username demo, but that's the account you're using on the live USB. There we go. Now we've got a new account. We got our new root passwords. And we're booted up into uh, just that quick trip through VirtualBox to show you the password setup and the menu selections. I'm back on real hardware, and now we're going to go back into Remaster Sys, Remaster Control Center. This is the new password you just set up. 
And now when we go uh, to configure life persistence, you're going to get to choose a save mode. Now the default is semi-automatic. Automatic actually doesn't work in MX according to this. And there's also a manual mode that will only save the persistence file, the root persistence file, when you ask it to. Uh, could be useful if you're trying to build the perfect uh, uh, USB key and you mess something up and you know just don't save the file that time. I'm going to leave mine on the default. You can also save on the fly with the save button. And also we have this interesting remaster button. What remaster does will make a new Linux file system out of whatever you've installed kind of cuts down on the RAM, cuts down on the persistence usage. That doesn't really mean do much unless you've installed some new packages. You actually don't need the persistence files to use the remaster function, but it is more convenient that way. Okay, so that's setting up your uh, persistence options. Uh, oh, I want to show you what happens when you log out. When you log out, the persistence file is going to save. Say yes. Don't do anything till it tells tells, tells you it's done. Persistence save succeeded. Click OK. And now the log out will continue from there. I'm recording, so I'm not going to log out just yet. So that is setting up your persistence files. Once you have this set up, you're good to install whatever application you want. And the brilliant part is, is you can use the installer to install whatever applications on there on your stick now in your root file system and home system files onto any new installation you do. This is great. I set up all my video editing stuff, my all my web browsers, everything that I want on the stick before I ever do an install. And that way I've got the base system always on a USB stick. And it's handy when I want need to change computers. Tips, tricks, how to is head over to memphiscommunity.org slash mx. Throw up a post at forum.memphiscommunity.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great night.